I'm Sandy Olnock, Bible Journaler here on YouTube, and today I'm going to be working in Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. And this is from Psalms 1, 1 through 3. And I'm going to draw a really rough sketch of a stream first and have just a bunch of switchbacks in it. I'm going to kind of clear it up a little bit as I do the coloring, but I wanted to get the basic shape in there and I want it to be uneven, thicker in some places, thinner in other places, and give myself an idea of where I want to put the tree that is me and about how big I want it to be. I want it to be a big old shade tree. That's what I would like to be. I think a shade tree works really well for something like this. You could be any kind of tree though. But I'm doing a little cleanup to my outlines to try to make it more stream-ish and less river-ish. And if I were to put rocks on either side of these, I would have different shapes on either side of the river. And I'll talk about that more as I color it in. But I'm sketching in here just for the sake of kind of picturing rocks on the side. I'm going to make this actually grasses, but it works to think of them as scallop shapes. So on the side of the river that is toward you, it's going to have the scallop shape because the, the grasses are in front of the river or the stream. But the far side of each one is going to be a flat shape because that's where the water just comes along the edge of the, the stream. But when you can pull this off, and it doesn't have to be pulled off super realistically, but if it's good enough to make people believe it, they're going to think you're really smart in the way that you're drawing this. Because one side has the scallops to it and the, the shapes of whatever the grasses are in front of it, and the other side is flatter. So... You can kind of see how that worked out here. Also notice how dark it looks right now. By the time I'm done, the stream is going to look very light. So all color is in relation to whatever else is on the page with it. So as I add more color to other things, that's going to look lighter and lighter. So I'm speeding this up a little bit because we could be here all day long. This page did take me quite some time to do. But I threw in some color first. I didn't worry about the fact that I just had all these horizontal lines in there and then started adding some shading and where do you add shading on things you add it on the bottom side of whatever something is so I'm adding it on the bottom side that flat portion that is touching the river in all these places so that means the sun is kind of going to be either above or behind all of it so that I can have these nice shadows around either side of the stream that are going to make it look deep it's going to make these little things look like they're poofing up because I'm stopping the dark color before I get to an almost scallop shape on the top edge. So that's just going to create these little hillside clumps on either side of the stream. And you can see that sometimes the stream disappears behind some of those clumps and sometimes it comes out from between them. That's what makes it look like it's winding in and out through the grass. And it's still not looking blended and I want you to just chill because I'm going to do some really fun blending with this. Once I get all these colors in here, I want to use some solution to be able to do this. You can use baby oil, you can use Gamsol, but with paper like this, Bible paper, you don't want to have that solution, that oily solution for blending, ending up on paper that's just blank. So on, on the paper without pencil on it, because you could end up with kind of oily stains, I guess. So I wanted to have enough color there. I've got a cotton ball in a little jar that I keep. Either I have one of baby oil and one of Gamsol. They both work about the same. And then I touch a blending stump to it. These blending stumps are just this little rolled up piece of paper, basically, with a point on it. And it's really soft, so you can move things around, move the color around. And it smooths it out. Isn't that beautiful? I love how it does that. But you need to have enough color on it so that you don't end up with oily marks on the other side. You can draw right over top of all of that as well. 
And as you add layers on top of things that have blending solution, you can actually get deeper, richer color. So I'm going to put my tree trunk in here in a light brown. And if you're nervous about drawing, always draw in a lighter color than you think you're going to need. Because you can always go over it and change it and fix it. But if you start in with a black pencil or something, it's going to be really hard to change that. It's one of the reasons I like to add my outlines to things after I'm done. Because then I know where all the color is and I can just trace around it. So I'm taking my dark pencil and I'm adding almost some broken lines onto the tree trunk to make it look like it's bark. And then I stopped the dark lines short of the roots. I want those roots to look like they're reaching out into the, the toward the stream and into the earth there. Because that's what the verse is about and being fed by this beautiful stream. And now I'm going to add the top of the tree. And this is, again, going to look messy. I'm going to do some blending, so it'll be okay. I'm letting a few of those areas look like they have little leaves, and I'm leaving some openings in the tree so that it, it isn't solid. I don't want a big solid shape. I want it to look like a lacy tree. So I'm just going to add in, with two different greens, a whole bunch of different leafy shapes, and then take my blending stump, and again, go over that and start to join some of those areas and blend some of them and leave other areas with the darker color. So I get a real good mix of dark and light and soft and hard edges. It's the same kind of thing I always think about with watercolors, how to get different edges. And you can do the same using a blending stump with your pencils, which is really fun to be able to get that kind of an effect. It gives this whole thing, this gorgeous storybook look. I just love the feel of the entire page. So when I was done with that, I had wiped away more of the detail than I wanted, so I'm going back into a few spots. Not everywhere. I don't want the tree to look like it's stippled or has chicken pox or anything, but I want to have a few areas that have a little more detail than others in them just to make it more interesting. And I did end up taping the corner of my paper down because it kept curling and Ooh. was being a pain on video. So normally I don't find that I have to do that. But I sometimes will turn the Bible around in order to hold on to it or put a clip on it. But it seemed for video, it would be nicer to just leave it vertically um, in the right orientation. So now I'm moving down to this bottom part and I'm using the blending stump, but with only the um, blending solution that was already on it. I'm not adding any more because I've got this big open area and I don't want to make oily stains. So just kind of spreading some color around. Mm -hmm. I haven't done the grassy area right under the tree yet for a reason because I wanted to work on that specifically now. Notice that I'm going to be doing it a little bit larger scale than the other parts of the stream. As the stream gets closer and closer, any details you add in get bigger and bigger because they're closer to you. So I've added first those same couple colors that I did at the bottom of each of the groupings, the clumps of grasses. And now I'm going to go in with a really dark green and I'm going to add some vertical lines to indicate grasses. And not making them all perfectly vertical, some fan out to the left or to the right so that they feel kind of soft. Mm. You can use your blending stump and soften them more if they look kind of weird to you. And I have two little clumps there because I'm going to, in addition to having that one clump right under the tree, I'm going to have another clump in front of it. And that means I'm going to add some dark color right under where the, the tree roots are and leave that spot with some highlight on it by doing the darker grasses up above it. And that's going to give me the ability to make it look like um, I have another clump of grass in front of the tree. So that's just a little trick you can use. And I did put a little bit more grasses in the rest of the stream, but very, very little. You'll see in just a few minutes um, when I zoom out that I did add some of those grasses, but not very much because you're really only going to see them in the stuff close up. So to do the reflections in the water, to make this look like really clear water, I'm doing some light greens that are pulling down straight from where the grasses are and then followed my tree trunk with a very light brown, don't go real heavy with it, and made the tree trunk exactly vertical from where the tree trunk is above, and trying to do about the same height. Don't get scientific with it, it's Bible journaling. We're not going to get totally crazy with it. And then I'm adding just a bunch of clumps of green in this top section. It's a reflection, it's 
going to be kind of loose and that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be the same shape as the tree. But making vertical lines indicates more of a reflection and gives it that sort of glassy feel when we get into our next couple steps with it. So I'm continuing to try to fill this in all the way to the bottom without going too heavy so that I can use my blending stump to continue those vertical lines and smooth things out just a little bit more. And then in order to make sure that it looks like it's glassy and not just um, like I've made all the, you know this kind of vertical tree in here, I'm going to do some more blending of some of these other colors right underneath of the other clumps of grass by pulling down some of the color that's there. So you might have enough pencil color not to have to draw any extra in. And then the final step is to go over the top with just a few lines and make them horizontal and not touch each other. They're not stripes, but just putting in some horizontal lines in a few places and that's going to make it all feel very glassy and leaves me a nice open area in there that when I want to add some journaling to it, I have a space to do that on top of the reflective water. So it came out so gorgeous, so lush and green and beautiful. I hope you've learned a little something from this. Maybe you'll try it yourself. And if so, then share it over in the Bible journaling group. I would love to see what it might have inspired you to do. Take care. I'll see you next Sunday with another Bible journaling video. Bye-bye.